Shabbat Shalom. We're getting ready for the holidays. We've got a lot of big things going on the, the next two weeks. Uh, this weekend is actually the busiest travel weekend of the year. And so we're, uh, we got great weather. So if you want to travel down here next week, we have our big conference. Uh, Pastor Jim Casebin from AFCM will be here Friday night and Saturday morning for a regional conference. Uh, next Saturday night, Pastor, uh, uh, actually Prophet uh, Steve Alley is going to be here. Uh, a lot of people know him from ORU. Also, uh, Sunday, he's going to be here uh, Sunday. And then on the 31st, we're doing a worship and prophecy with uh, Richard Billing. So we got uh, next weekend, we got people coming in from uh, Chicago, uh, Boston, uh, California, Houston, New York. So we got folks flying in from all over. Uh, it should be a great time. Uh, probably eat good too. So, you know, food's always good here. But uh, next week, uh, Pastor Jim, he's inviting folks from AFCM, and we have the, the whole Texas region showing up. So it's, it's going to be a great time. And we have David is here again. Amen. David, yeah. David's back. David's back. So Rita's going to get upset. If you have Rita's number, you need to text her or get here quick because uh, Rita's your number one fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you need to read it. 911, 911. And so David will be here this week, next week, and hopefully we'll have to renegotiate re re his contract. Sunday, Richard Billings back on Sunday morning. Tomorrow night, uh, Dan, uh, Dan uh, Dano is going to be teaching. And then uh, I think Pastor uh, Daniel Ty will be here Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. So we got a lot of great things going on. We're going to uh, go ahead and, and put things back on track. You know, this is a, a kind of a crazy time of the year for a lot of people, and we appreciate everybody uh, here tonight. God bless. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. I am so grateful to be back. I'm so grateful to worship with you. But tonight... There was a reason why we came here tonight. And I believe that there's, I believe we should come with an expectation that he, he's going to meet us here. So Holy Spirit, I ask of you right now to touch our hearts, to renew our minds as we honor you and worship you. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Let's pray Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Jerusalem shall live in Let's pray Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem Jerusalem shall live in peace Shalom, shalom Shalom, 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 Jerusalem shall, let's sing it again, Shalom, Shalom. Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. I'm going to sing it again. Come on. Shalom, 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 shalom. Jerusalem shall live in peace. Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Lord, we praise you. We honor you, Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, and my guitar string just popped. Can I borrow that guitar? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> He's a good God. He's a good God. We're going to worship him. Righteousness being restored. Though these are days of great trials, Lord, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds. 
Shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, yeah. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion till salvation comes. Salvation is here. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. These are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. We are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, not of Zion's hill, sound. Behold, behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, yeah, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. There is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. Just say it with me. Just there's no God like our God. There's no God like our God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of science here, salvation comes. Behold, behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion till salvation come, and out of Zion till salvation come, and out of Zion till salvation come. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Hallelujah.
bless the name Yeshua, for He is the name of the whole name. Hallelujah, bless the name Yeshua, Messiah gave His life in my Thank you, O Lord, for sending your Son, who gave himself a ransom for our sin. Yes, you did. Perfect atonement, a spotless peace offering you have given us a way to you through it. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua, for He is the name above every name. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua, Messiah gave His life in my blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua. For he is the name of a all name. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua. Messiah gave his life in my blood. But Adonai Yeshua, Redeemer of Israel. The Zion awaits the day of your returning. Oh, come to us, Emmanuel. Hallelujah, say, Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua. Is the name above all names. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua. Messiah gave his life in my blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name Yeshua. For he is the name above all all names, oh, hallelujah, bless the name Yeshua, Messiah gave his life in my place, Messiah gave his life in my place, Messiah gave his life in my place. He's the name above all names. Oh, Lord. He gave His only Son. Messiah gave His life. Thank you for all that you've done. How you brought me to your marvelous land. Oh. Angels and the heavens singing holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is 
the God of Israel. Elders bow and worship as the angel voices. Fragrant clouds of incense around the throne of grace. For we bow and worship at the brilliance of your face. We cry holy, holy, holy is the Lord, holy, holy, holy. the Lord. Holy are you, Lord. Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh is the song that heaven Should praise him, hallelujah, Elohim. Come to reign forever, King of kings and Lord of lords. Lift your head, O Zion, open wide your ancient door. He cry holy, holy. the Lord, holy, are, holy, holy, you are holy, it's the Lord, you are righteous and mighty, you are Lord. so holy, so mighty. We give you all the glory here tonight. Lord, we honor your presence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Because you loved us first. You gave your only son. We just call upon your name tonight. Adonai, Elohim. We call on you tonight.
Through the blood of the Lamb, I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter. I enter to holy of 
King of kings, to the Lord of lords, holy are you, Lord, for your name is holy, you are holy, holy are you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Father, bless David. Take it, his heart's desires, all that he needs, Father, is in you, Father. So we, we call the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob upon him, that he will have everything over his family, in his pocket, in his mind, his heart, Father. He exalts you above all things, Father. Let us have, let's all have the hearts like David, that we can worship you in spirit and truth. In Yeshua's name, Hashem, Amen. Hallelujah. We got. Um, <laughs> I, I got the adoption papers ready. We've been trying to adopt them. Now, this Esteban, Este Esteban, that one song, the Send Down the Mighty Ones. Holy Spirit gave me that song. You like that, huh? We got a chair for you right there, <laughs> you, right behind uh, uh, Fabio. Um, we, you know, the Lord was uh, dealing with me, and he said in uh, Mark chapter uh, 8, you don't have to go there. He, he was asking Peter, who, who do they say I am? And, and see, this is the thing. I am. Most people don't know who I am. And then he had to turn around to Peter and say, get behind me, Satan. And see, this is the, the you know, we got a full moon out and all these people are getting all spooky on us it's like you know what we got the power of god in here Amen. and that we don't need to fringe and and, and god bless you you know y you like the other guitar both of them are nice guitars i'm in but um you know people get in the you know the holiday season and there's actually you hear about the holiday spirit right there's actually a holiday spirit a lot of people dwell in during the christmas time and new year's and it's actually a spirit of depression. And in Isaiah 61, verse 3, it talks about the spirit of fainting, which is actually a depression-type spirit. And so, you know, this is why worship's important. We get into worship. And, you know, the, we, we have things going on all weekend. And, you know, we pray for a lot of people during the week. 
And uh, the, the bottom line is you got to put it, put something in the tank. If you're not worshiping, you can't get your breakthrough. You know, a lot of times people are like, well, you prayed for me or this happened or that happened. Hey, when you get into worship like that, you tear down the, the walls, you tear down the, the foundation, everything that the devil's put out there, you've torn it down. And uh, Pastor Danita was uh, telling me today when she was driving, she saw these powerful swords over Yeshua house and every church has an angel. And it says that in the book of Revelation, he's speaking to the angels of the churches and those ch churches where they're not praying, they're not in, in righteousness, they're not doing the right things. Guess what? He takes those angels away. Because what's happening, if we're not praying, we're not doing the right things, our covering gets beat up. And so we got to break that great deception and it, it's happening in the land. So we're going to, we're going to, we got the offering, we're going to pray over the offering. Um, we got a, uh, the end of the year is next year, uh, I guess uh, all the way through Monday. So we got four services next week. We got tomorrow night, Dan, Dano's teaching. In two weeks, we're starting the uh, Torah Club on Saturday nights, which is cool. Um, a lot of good things. Next week, Jim Caseman, Steve Alley. You, a lot of, the, a lot of some, the, the folks have all gone up to Rama has met Steve Alley. Um, he actually prophesied over Zoe. And, you know, it was, it was pretty big time. Where's Zoe? There he is. <laughs> you, you, he likes Zoe. Zoe had to give him a hug. But Zoe hugs everybody he meets. I, I, I found that out. So we, we, he, he hugged uh, Kenneth Hagen uh, when we were up there at Rayma. That was, that was kind of awkward for me because uh, Zoe wouldn't let go. But um, it, it was good. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's like, ugh. Father, we just praise you for the blessings of the Yeshua house and that you're lining us up for the new place with the great sound system and more seats and everything we need, Father, to serve everybody that comes in here, Father. We just praise you for the holidays. We ask for that, the spirit of the holidays that attacks these families and depression and, and, and whatnot. We break off those spirits. We ask for the healing power that you left here with us through the Holy Spirit to soothe and heal the hearts of the brokenhearted, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hashem, amen. amen. Well, Pastor Kimberly got a big red coat. Did anybody see that? You want to turn the fan off, please? Kimberly, she got that in the mail today. And so she, I think she needs a big black bucket. But actually, she looks like Gloria. Amen. Oh. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, uh, it is uh, Shalom. The reason I wear this, actually this is not my favorite color, but this is a very uh, special gift I got. And then uh, like uh, after ministry over the Japan and uh, Korea last time, as you guys know, and the uh, Lord told me that uh, he's gonna, new anointing on me. He's gonna put the uh, new authority on me. And then the lady, she doesn't know anything about it. And uh, when I come back to Busan, which is a Korea South part, and then the lady called me from the Seoul, she needed to meet me. And uh, that time I was so burned out to meet the people, so uh, I didn't answer the phone. But she kept calling me, and I finally picked up the phone, and the lady said, I need to see you t right now. But I'm not in Seoul right now, I'm in a Busan. The lady said, God gave me the, the cloth for authority, the authority cloth. So th this cloth will be uh, authority, new authority on me. So she mailed, she mailed to me from Korea and I got it today. So I wear it. So every time if I need it, authority at home, I will wear it. <laughs> but oh no. it, it's too hot, I'm gonna well, take this out. Well, that's a good warning though. Um, you know, it, it's a, we're heading to 2019. Hi, Nico. Nico is here. Um, we're heading 2019. What is your plan for 2019? What's going to be happen? But before I talk about the 2019, what's going to happen 2020? Just the one, one thing I want to share with you, 2020 in June, 
at the Netherlands. I don't know how you call the Hague, 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 city of the Hague. City of Hague in Netherlands, there is a, a peace palace. There's a palace called the Peace Palace. Peace Palace is owned by the Carnegie, 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 Carnegie Foundation. Carnegie Foundation, yes. And 2020 in June, at that building at the Peace Palace, they're going to have a World Council Church meetings. World Council Church meetings. Every leadership WCC. from the relig religious, from the uh, Catholic, from the Buddhist, uh, from Islam, and uh, from the Christian, all the leaders that they have uh, joined, they're going to talk about the peace and love. Peace and love. Church, every time when you hear the peace and love, you need to remember what Jesus said to you. You need to remember what Lord uh, Yeshua said, and uh, this is right here, the Matthew, Matthew 10, verse 27 said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Not peace on earth. Because we are in, we are, if we in Yeshua, that is a shalom anyway. I came not to send the peace, but a sword. But a sword. We need to know how to fight. And uh, this season, I am keep reading and uh, listening about the Matthew 24. Matthew 24, it is uh, talking about the end time. You know, that's what I'm saying. If 2020, June, if that agreement go through, then the persecution over the church, it will be getting seriously. You know, the, in China right now, it, we pray for the Chinese, China Christians right now, because they captured 100 uh, pastors, elders, Worship leaders, they put in the somewhere. The, the uh, one of the elder had a uh, write a letter to Korean c churches, talk about the, they don't know where the people they took it to, they don't know where they took it to. It's really a persecution. It's uh, China is uh, so showing us an example. What is the persecution will be, and uh, it will be going to come to us soon. But in the world, there are the two different kind of churches. One is a visible. Super church, visible super church. One is an invisible super church. But it's an invisible super church. Like a Yeshua house, invisible super church. I don't see it, I don't care how many people here. God's plan over the Yeshua house is an invisible super church. Because this church will affect to the, the truth. Like uh, we talk about the sword. It's not about the love and peace. Many churches talk about the love and peace. Love each other, love each other, peace and peace. You know, the, when I was young, when I was in college time, we all talk about the peace. Remember peace, hippie mark. I even had my uh, hippie mark on my clothes everywhere. I was one She's of the hippie. 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 What I said. Hippie. Though. Hippie. Hippie da. Yeah. But that is uh that is uh that is a lying, lying spirit. You know, end time, many spirit of the lying will attack you. Amen. And that's <coughs> why the Lord said, have a discernment. Have a strong discernment wh what we need for my life, for our life, for my family, my children. So Again, uh, many people talk about the, how lovely, how peaceful. Don't get deceived because if you in the Yeshua, the truth, you are in the shalom. Remember? So uh, it's really time to wake up. What's going to be happen 2020? And my personal opinion, 2019 is a prep preparation. Preparation. What's going to be happen in 2020, and 2020, and also uh, election, right? Election for the Trump, and then we need to pray 
a lot about the uh, 2019. So many people say 2019, it's not going to be that easy year. But we need to pray. We can go breakthrough. And it's a Shabbat. I'm going to light the candle. So everyone close your eyes. Parogatadonai Eloheno Malakaulam. Asher Kidishano be Mizobotab, Pichpanu, Lohadring Nurshir Shabbat. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandment and commanded us to kindle the candles of a Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, how many people know what the peace sign? Remember this? The peace sign? Have you seen that, right? You know what it is? Uh, it's the sign of somebody being hung upside down. This is what, when they crucified the Christians and they hung them upside down, when they hung Peter upside down, this is the sign they used. So the peace sign for the devil is killing Christians. I'm going to have a nice piece of bread. Thank you for the bread. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I, I just got the crumbs. And so, you know, it's funny how the devil's crazy. He's saying peace where he's actually saying, I'm going to kill you. And so we, ha we have to be aware of that. Um, also, there's, there's so much persecution, like in Syria right now, with the, the Christians. You know, um, the only country that has Christians that are not being persecuted right now is Israel. And the Christians that are being persecuted in Israel are being persecuted in Palestine. And so this, this is really a heads-up time. Uh, you know, we, we spoke about the Nigerians in Nigeria. There's so many Christians being killed right now. In the last year, there's about 20,000 Christians killed. 20,000 Christians killed. And so, you know, as we pray, we need to be praying for the whole body. We, a lot of times we pray for real basic selfish things in our lives. And we need to be, we're, we're going to be teaching on prayer a lot. And on, on Sunday morning, Richard Billingsley is going to be here to teach on prayer. And, you know, uh, we've been ministering together about 18 years. Richard's a really good guy. And, and, and the Lord called, told him last week, call Carl. I'm like, really? He goes, God told me to come in and start, you know, help Yeshua House on a regular basis. So we're going to see Richard and we're going to see some of the other prophetic people. But it's for the equipping of the saints. And so part of the equipping is praying for one another. And as we started getting into here, you know, we got a lot of people that are wounded and, you know, uh, we got to get our mindset into a battle mode because uh, at the last day of Hanukkah, something happened. The Sanhedrin in Israel pronounced, hey, we got the building permit for the temple. Right. And not officially. It's not like going down the city of Plano, but they're going to build it. And that's a shifting from the age of the Gentiles back into the age of. Uh, of, of Israel and so we need to be prepared and, and a lot of the things we got in our heads are what we think about we need to clear out real fast and so as we pray tonight blessed are you O God king of the universe to bring forth the fruit from the vine Yeshua bring life to Israel Lakaim. Now, this WCC, the World Council of Churches, started in 1948. It started the same year as the UN. And it parallels the UN. And the World Council of Churches came out of the American Council of Churches, which are a bunch of Freemasons. And so they go from the UN to the world. And they're the ones that have introduced the homosexuality and the things against our basic precepts of Christianity into the body of Christ. And so uh, last time they had a conference was in Busan, and my wife got on the plane, and she was out there. Were you blowing the shofar? Yeah, she took the shofar. Kimberly, was, were you blowing or hitting people with it? <laughs> and so she, she was out there battling the, you know, and, and it's like the mantra of, oh, let's all get along. These people are here to deceive 
rob, sell, and kill. You know, abortion's okay, gay marriage. Well, you know, if we have missionaries they, and they're gay, they should be married gay missionaries. I mean, this stuff is crazy stuff, absolutely crazy. And that the body of Christ is wounded and that we can't, our hands are tied because of tolerance. And so, you know, we, we take this in, in fear and in reverence. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe, to bring forth the bread from the earth, Yeshua, the bread of life. Amen. Oh, I'll help you out. I think I got a big old chunk there. I got a mouse coming in the house. We have a house mouse. You know, um, I heard the expression over our, our little dog. You know, we got a little little white dog now. Wiley's not impressed with them. And they call him a house mouse. How many people have heard that? Little dog, a house mouse? And she, uh, she thinks she's a lion. And it's, it's really amazing how much faith this little dog has. You know, because she will, she'll, 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 you know, she, when, the, when something's out there, she's protecting the whole house. And, you know, we get in the prayer, and we're going to be teaching a lot on prayer uh, over the next month, because um, a few weeks ago, the Lord gave me Psalms. You want to put, can you put that up, Psalms, that, that sheet for Psalms? And so in, in the, I was asking the Lord, it was actually about two and a half weeks ago, the Holy Spirit said, you need to teach on Psalms. I'm like, which one? He goes, you need to teach Psalms. I'm like, what? And he said, no, prayer, scripture, attendance, lifestyle, money management, and service. And, and this, this psalm attitude, when you go back through the psalms, you start learning about, you know, prayer. You start understanding the scripture. You start understanding why you should, should attend uh, the service, the lifestyle, how to manage your money and service. And if you're doing this, if you're practicing psalms, you're actually tied into the, 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 the local body, into Christ, into the local body to the point where you're not going to fall backwards. You're not going to fall out. You're not going to be alone. And, and the, the devil uses this, this, you know, hey, you know what? You've got to keep this secret or you've been wounded or something like that. And the shame, when we, like we were talking about when we go to Japan, that, uh, there, there's a lot of shame culture in Japan, right? It's like this, right? <laughs> and so the shame culture is that the devil wants to keep you wounded and that you can't talk about your pain, and then he keeps grinding salt in it. And so that long, it's just a, this long misery. So we want to get this prayer out, and, and you got to have scripture backing it up, and then you got to be in fellowship, and then your home lifestyle has to change. So you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, we'll talk about that. Go ahead and turn that off. We're, we're in Genesis today, and uh, and we're in the, the last book of Genesis, and, and, and the last partial reading of Genesis. And in Genesis 48, verses 11 through 16, we see Joseph speaking to his father, Jacob. Now, by this time, Jacob turned into Israel. And so you got the father, you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Carl, right? You need to put your name in there too. This is the covenant, and we talked about the Abraham, uh, Abraham's gospel. Do you know Abraham had a gospel? You bet. He preached everything that Jesus did because all the stuff that's involved in the covenant of salvation came out of Abraham's covenant. So Joseph is speaking to his father. And Israel said to Joseph, I, I never expected to see your face again. He, he you know, Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, was thought to have been killed, that the, the lions ate him or somebody ate him and they found him and the brothers lied to the daddy. And what a mess. And we talked about prayer and how Joseph kept himself and, and kept, him, uh, kept himself in line and went through the prison. And, and he ended up being um, on the high level of the uh, leadership, actually, as high as Pharaoh himself. And so um, Joseph uh, came up, boom, there's my father Jacob. I never expected to see your face, and behold, God has let me see your children as well. 
he brings them out, and Joseph then took them forward to his knees. He brings the two boys out and bowed his face to the ground. Verse 13, Joseph took both of them, Ephraim, to his right hand, and towards Israel's left, he put uh, Manasseh and his, with his left hand towards Israel's right and brought them close to him. The first thing he did, then Israel stretched out his hand, and he actually took his hands like this. He, they crossed their arms, and when you cross your arm, you're releasing the blessings of the prophet and the king. You, you know, you go like this. Usually when you're praying with somebody, you're directly transferring the king's, pro, the, the king's anointing and the priest's anointing. So Israel stretched out his left hand, laid it on the head of Ephraim, and, who was a younger one, and his, uh, his right hand on Ephraim, and his left hand on Mish, Mish, uh, Manasseh's head, crossing his hands. It was more like this. All, although Manasseh was the firstborn. Verse, he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and may, and may my name live on it, and the names of my father Abraham Isaac Jacob, and may they grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. He was basically taking the, the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, his self, passing it down to Joseph's kids. And remember, the two tribes come out of this. Two tribes come out of this. One of the tribes got lost along the way. You know, I, I think they got, you know, they lost their luggage, everything. One tribe actually got completely, wh which tribe was that? Yeah. So here, here's this prayer, but what, what, what hit me today when I was reading this, Joseph, jo uh, excuse me, Jacob never expected to see his son again. How many times do you quit praying when you don't see what you think you need to see. Jacob quit praying, and when he, he, he prayed, he never expected. That's the problem with prayer. A lot of people pray, but they don't expect. So what are you praying for and not expecting? Why are you praying? Are you whining to God? Are you saying, God, well, you know, I really, you know, there used to be a, a, a rock and roll song uh, by Janis Joplin. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a new Mercedes Benz? <laughs> Dialing for dollars is calling my name. And see, some of the older people in here know this song. Do you remember that song, baby? And so here, people are praying and not expecting any results. Is that idol worshiping? Or that's just idol praying, not I, praying to an idol, but you're just sitting there praying oh, the same prayer over and over, and, and, and you get in a confused state. And so here we are. We got we to gotta get our prayer matching our mouth. And so if we go to Hebrews 11, 1, we see something to happen. In Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of not, not seeing. So as we have faith, you must believe, let's go to Hebrews 11.6, we must believe that, number one, God is a rewarder. It is impossible, without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he comes to God, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Is that ESV? Can we go to ESV? Yeah, because I, I had it memorized the other way, and I, I'm, now I'm confused. I, like, I, get, I get things. Oh, I'm so good. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. And without faith is it impossible to please him, for whoever draw near to God must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who seek him. That's powerful. So it's not like you're going to pr pray to a dead idol, but you're talking to your father expecting a result. So as we're praying, if, if, you're, if you're praying for something, 
and you don't have the scripture to back it up, it becomes a problem. But when we're praying for something and you say, well, I don't know if it's going to happen. You've already canceled it out. You've already wiped it out. You've already knocked the feet out. Number two, if you're praying for something, you have to, number one, believe he is real. God is 100% alive. He's completely involved in everything we're doing right now in this church 24 hours a day. And whatever warfare, or people say, oh, I'm in warfare all week, he's already giving you the victory. And that victory is going to be a reward for being faithful. So we, if we have faith, we have to have corresponding action. We have to pray in that direction towards the faith for the end result to happen. If we have to change, we need to change. If we need to reposition ourselves, we need to reposition ourselves. We cannot be in a place that we're idling and nothing's happening. We're, we're going backwards and saying, well, God, I'm waiting for you. He's in process. And so if you're waiting for him, you need to be praising him and thanking him. So he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And in one translation, it's diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. And last week we were talking about prayer, that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much, and that that prayer, fervent righteous prayer, that means that you yourself are cleaned up, and that when you're praying, there's nothing that the devil can hold against you. That you're cleaned up to the point where you're speaking something out, that you're not expecting an outside miracle, you're expecting an inside miracle to manifest because your spirit man, your soul, your mind, and your body are in alignment with God's words, God's plan, and then the spirit is coming out of you physically, mentally, and everything's lining up, and that miracle literally just manifests out of you. It's not based on, hey, well, I'm waiting for the miracle. We're not supposed to live off miracles. Baby Christians can get a miracle here and there because, hey, God's like, here's your candy. Be good. Grow up. But we need to get the fact that when we're praying, that we're in agreement, and that our belief system, that his reward is coming. If his reward's not going to come, why are you praying? And so, so Joseph was taken away for, what, 17 years, and then his daddy comes, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, I never expected to see you. So a part of faith is an expectation. The expectation comes out of your mouth, comes out of your plans, comes out of your purpose. You know, well, I'm saving up for a house, but every night you're out spending 100 bucks on dinner. Where's your house? This is your house right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I got a big house. So when we start dealing with, with this faith, we also see that he's a rewarder. But let's go, let's go to, the Lord told me, let's go to Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. He just told me to go there. So we're going to go Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. In Hebrews 1, which of the angels ever said, sit at the right hand and I will make a, your enemies a footstool? The angels never said this. We are higher than the angels. Verse 14. Aren't the angels, aren't they all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation? You are born again. You got Jesus in you. You got the Holy Spirit. You're praying in the Spirit. Sometimes when you pray in the Spirit, you're actually praying in tongues of the angels. We're, we're lining things up. We're sending angels out. They're a part of this task force. We cannot do spiritual warfare without recognizing angels. There are two times more angels than there are demons. Thank you, Jesus. And all the angels are more powerful than every demon ever existed. And that every demon is at the bottom of every angel's foot already the problem is when you're praying against or in lack of faith i don't know father why you know you start putting this crunch in the 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 angel's hands are tied and the devils are beating them up do, 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 do. and then somebody says "Ooh, you you know you know the uh, satan's stronger than jesus you know Who's smoking crack in here? 
Jesus conquered everything at the cross. Everything's been broken. So we have to understand when we're praying, we've got to have more faith and that we expect that when we pray, expect something going to happen. And so we're, we're empowered through the Holy Spirit. We're empowered through the Scripture. We're empowered by authority over spirits, good spirits and bad spirits. And then we go to Mark 11, 24 and 25. We see, we see something happened here. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father who is in heaven may forgive your trespass. Let's back up to 24. Let's break this down. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe. You go to the restaurant, you order food, right? How many people have ever gone to Denny's? Okay, I go to Denny's. I go to Denny's, I order a hamburger, and I sit there. And how long are you going to wait until she de delivers your hamburger? Usually about 20 minutes. In Denny's, late night, 30 minutes. But after a certain point, what do you do? You demand it. You demand it. Now, IHOP, they got issues over at IHOP. I don't even talk about IHOP tonight. <laughs> but, but after 30 minutes, I'm expecting my food, period. Especially if somebody else is paying for it. I want, I want my food now. Now, if you take Wyman with you, somehow Wyman has this, this special anointing to show up when I eat at fancy restaurants. And it's like, Wyman's there. Hey, uh, hey, Wyman. And, you know, Wyman's doing a good job. Hallelujah. So Wyman is expecting something when he goes to eat. Amen. So we have to believe that you receive, and then it becomes yours. You believe, you receive, it becomes. You believe, you receive, it comes. This is everything. But then how do you reinforce that? Finding scriptures that support that concept, that subject. Understanding how you're praying. But the verse 25 is really contingent where as we're praying, whatever you stand praying, forgive. And if you have anything against anyone so that your father who also is in heaven may forgive your trespass. So you're asking God for something and boom, it's not coming. Hey, I ordered my hamburger 20 minutes ago. What's going on? Well, the girl's over at the cash register or the machine trying to put the order in, and the machine's stuck, right? That's what happens when we're asking, hey, Father, we need this, and it's stuck. And then you find out there's some sin involved. And, and you know, people, I, I've been hearing this word curse a lot. Everybody, ooh, there's a curse, and blah, blah, blah. And I'll tell you, the thing with curses is, is internal. People have internalized things, and they block themselves. They, because what happens when they believe that that curse is stronger than Jesus, I can't get what I need because the devil's doing something against me. Well, that's actually unforgiveness against Jesus. You're saying, well, Jesus, you did that, but I'm not getting my result. Well, that's unforgiveness against Father, against Jesus, and it's actually unforgiveness against the Word of God. So we want to change our whole perspective about forgiveness that we trust the word of God. We trust the father. We trust what Jesus did. We trust the blood. We trust the name of Jesus. All this happens and guess what happens? Then you get your breakthrough. So we're going to go to Mark 11, 22 through 26. We're going to back up to, and it says, Jesus answered them. Don't flip it yet. Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Translated from Hebrew, trust God. Trust God. And everything we deal with, with people, is trusting God. Now, a couple weeks ago, I posted this thing. Uh, I don't know if they were Pentecostal. And they put this guy uh, up front, and they said, close his eyes. And everybody's behind him, ready to catch him, right? And they, they said, close his eyes. And they said, just go ahead and fall. And he falls forward. <laughs> and everybody's behind them. Okay, well, we're not specifically praying sometimes. 
You know, can you imagine all those people? And this guy clonks on the ground. It was, it was, it was a, you know, it was like when Kimberly fell out one day. And so having faith in God is trusting God. This is the biggest problem in Christianity. Number one, he's the creator. He's the creator of all things. Nothing is higher than him. Nothing is more powerful than him. And that everything that people that resent this have an issue. So have faith in God. Trust God. Trust his word. Trust his plan. Plan. Verse 23. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up, thrown in the sea, does not doubt in his heart, believes, but believes that he says, what he says will come to pass and it will be done for him. Hold on to that one. Now, people have thought, well, moving mountain, moving mountain. There's a spiritual moving mountain. How many people know this? And so first of all, no doubt. We see that. Let's not have any doubt. But moving mountain, this is confusing because a lot of times if, if Jesus used idioms, little phrases that we don't know. A mountain, I want you to think about this. These are spiritual mountains. Okay, now if you look at a regular mountain, it has trees on it, right? Now if you cut down all the trees and the rains, guess what? It washes away. So you, every mountain on this planet has been worshipped on. Did you know that? There's a, probably a couple out there in the cold areas. But overall, you know, the Mount Sinai and, the, you know, some of these mountains that, that have been used in shamanism, is, 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 you know, they, they go up on the mountain, they do all their witchcraft and all this other stuff. So the mountains are a spiritual place. Mountains are a place of sacrifice, but it's also a fact that if you remove all the spirits, like you cut down those trees, that thing will wash away. There's n your problem is a mountain, you pull all those trees out, you pull the castle of demons off it, you're praying against it, that will eventually go away. Amen. So there's a spiritual mountain as well as a physical mountain. I heard a story about a, uh, some folks that was building a church, and they actually were praying against a mountain behind them because they needed a parking lot, and there was a landslide, and it was like, well, we prayed that mountain away. Well, praise God, that happens once in a while. But mostly, we'll take, uh, you know, the mountain will be taken up, thrown in the sea, but we do not doubt in our heart but we believe that what he says will come to pass. Now, here's a key word there. What he says, not we say. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay? So, uh, verse 24, we talked about that. Therefore, I tell you whatever you ask in prayer, believe, but you have to prepare to receive. Do not ask God until you're ready to receive it. Okay, so I got a little 10-year-old boy going, I'm praying for a Corvette. Well, realistically, God's not going to give him a Corvette until he's 16, 18, or 22 when he's out of the house and can afford his own shirt. But the little boy's praying, I want a Corvette, I want a Corvette. Well, that's not going to happen until he gets a little bit older. That's what happened to me. And so praying, believing, receiving is part of that. 25, we talked about forgive repent, and the prayers of a righteous person. If you're, pray, if you're cleaned up, you're focused, you're praying with the right heart, it's going to happen. And verse 26, oh, that's 25, verse 26. If you don't forgive, oh, that's in the different translation. Don't worry. If it says, if you don't forgive, he cannot give it to you. What translation are you in? Oh, wow. We, we need to start putting the New American Standard back up. All right. In, in, in verse 26 in New American Standard, there's a footnote that says, if you don't forgive, your prayers are hindered. It's not going to happen. Okay, so there, there's a contingency. Now, this is where we get messed up, where people pray and they believe that they're going to receive. There you go. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So you're going to be stuck where you're at. Now, verse 24, pray and believe. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 37. I want you to look at this. For nothing will be impossible with God. Wow, 
Nothing is impossible with God. As long as it's in his plan and it's part of his purpose, it will manifest. And so this, this is actually in our hallway, I think. Is it out in the hallway? Yeah, it's in the hallway along the wall. But see, people get this, well, nothing's impossible with God. Well, nothing's impossible with God. Well, it has to be a part of his plan to make it possible or even plausible. If it's possible, it's plausible. If it's plausible, it's possible. But if it's not in his plan, it's neither. And so nothing is impossible. Let's back up to verse 35. This is, this is uh, the Virgin Mary, the angel's talking to the Virgin Mary, and the angel answered and said to her, Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Verse 36. Click. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth also has conceived a son in her old age, and sh she who is called barren is now in her sixth month. Verse 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. And so when we see this, we put it in the context, these, this is part of the plan, and that it goes from being plausible to being possible. Plausible is could happen to it will happen. And so when, when we're, we're in prayer, we want to be praying and agreeing with God. And sometimes we don't understand God's plan, but it becomes from plausible to possible. So in his plan, nothing's impossible. I'm going to tell you what, what makes it impossible. When you have... A free will. Okay? We have people, uh, uh, when I went, went to Rama and when I started hearing about the faith message, and God told me that woman's going to be my wife. Or uh, the last week of school, I had three women call me up. Did I ever tell you about this, baby? <laughs> I had three women call me up and say, God told me you're going to be my husband. And by the time I got the third phone call, I said, well, God must think I'm a Mormon. <laughs> because you're the third one this week. And none of them were in, eight. first of all, I swore I'd never marry anybody in Oklahoma or from Oklahoma. Nothing personal. How many people from Oklahoma? <laughs> Pastor Danita's here. Is she from Oklahoma? Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right. <laughs> and, so, and, and so, you know, you know, you got this, this soul and free will. And so if somebody said, well, you know, God told me somebody's going to be my wife. Well, you got to have agreement. And so when we're in a prayer agreement, and, you know, when I, I met Kimberly, she goes, well, you know, I can't marry you. I go, why? She goes, well, my kids have to get married. I go, when are they going to get when are they gonna, when, when, when they're going to get married? And she goes, in five years. I said, you'll make me wait five years to marry you? And so I started praying. Within three months, four months, both of her kids were married. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> eh, that was a quick five years, right? Were you happy about that? No. <laughs> so the first five years of our marriage didn't count because I, I jumped the gun. But literally... You know, you know, she put a condition on the whole thing. I thought it was pretty funny. So that God's plan has to be the foundation of your word, the foundation of your prayer. So if you're praying for something and you don't have a covenant, you can't pull. And if, if I said, you know, Dano, Dano, um, can I have access to all your uh, finances? God told me to uh, I get I have all your money. And Daniel's going to go, no, you don't have that right. And see, that's the problem in a lot of the soulish prayers, and that, that actually is witchcraft. We had a circumstance years ago, we had a Korean church, and this guy calls up and goes, I'm an apostle, and I'm going to take over this church. And the night before, the Holy Spirit showed me this guy was coming down, and he's going to breach the church. I'm going, I call up the pastor, I go, hey, uh, Han, um, I said, uh, 
the Holy Spirit told me to change the locks in the church. I went down in the middle of the night, changed all the locks on the church. The next morning, I get a phone call. <clears throat> Who changed the locks on the church? I said, I did. He goes, there's a group of 15 people here from California to take over the church. I'm like, huh. They're not doing God's plan. I stood them off. I'm like, you, you know, I had people praying in tongues. And, oh, 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 oh. You open the door. I was like, no, I got the keys in my office. And I had people jump in my face and this crazy stuff. Dude, that's witchcraft. They were going to breach the church. And, and what eventually happened, they breached the church. They broke into the church. Had service. You think Jesus was happy about that? What's up with that? And then the Holy Spirit said, chase them to the ocean. And he said, gotcha. And before you know it, they're all out of town because I'm going to bust them. But see, this is how people, they get something in their mind, and they think, that's mine. That's mine. And when we get into coveting, this is where we find out in the Ten Commandments, people are coveting in prayer. Well, you know, uh, we had, uh, we, we've had several people come up and say, well, God told me so-and-so is going to be my wife. Really? Well, she's already married to somebody else. Why would God tell you that? He's breaking his own covenant, telling you that? That's crazy 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 stuff so when we're praying we got to be respectful of god's word and that we're in the point of forgiveness and repentance but the prayers of a righteous man availeth much and that our our prayers our foundation is god's will now in all reality kimberly would never have married me right <laughs> oh and so and, and so, because you just love my sense of humor, right? <laughs> and so in all reality, God put us together. Amen. Now, my grandson's going to be born next month, right? All right, because her daughter's saying, that's your grandson, and then grandma's going to have to wait in line. Amen? So, <clears throat> so that, that's a good thing. Let's go to Numbers, Numbers chapter 23. Verse 19. This is a powerful, powerful sp scripture we're going to hit on. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Okay, this is for foretelling Christ, foretelling who God is. And that, so here's Jesus actually has to repent. He, Jesus repented for us. He died on the cross. Has he said... Will he not do it, or has he spoken, and he will not make it good? So God is not a man that he is a liar. That, number one, God has his own way of doing things. And his way is a righteous way. It's separate the way the world thinks. It's separate how we think. And that once we start reading the Bible, we're reprogramming our mind, and we're getting ourselves on track. And so all the animosities, all the insecurities, all that stuff gets out. And, and that his way is the right way, and his plan is the right plan heading in the right direction. And that he cannot lie or change his mind. So when somebody tells me something stupid, well, God told me I can do this, and it's completely against Scripture, that's not good. It's deception. And then they're spending all their time praying, and it's like, here, come here, pray for me, pray for me. And they go around, pray, 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 pray. Uh, and what's happening? They're trying to get consensus to get something done, but it will never happen. It can happen because they're breaking, their will is trying to break the purpose of God or the will of God. And through consensus, we, there's stories where, um, I, I've heard stories where a pastor had cancer back in the 1930s, and everybody was praying for him. Everybody around. And up to 10,000 people were praying for him every day. And people were saying, well, why doesn't he get healed? Doesn't God know he's sick? Doesn't God know he need, he's going to die and his family's going to be alone? Doesn't God know this? Doesn't God? You bet he does. But the problem was the man's faith, he was not believing and he was not receiving the healing. He was sitting back whining and crying about it, and then 
the story goes that he finally wakes up one day. He's about ready to die. He's sitting in the bed, and he knows everybody's praying for him, and he's reading that Mark 11, 21, 20, or 22 through 26. And he kind of wakes up and is like, hey, he gets out of bed, and he believes that he's healed. And people are like, well, Benny Hinn and blah, 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 and that guy and this guy and, and all these faith preachers. You know what? It's not their faith. It's not what I say. It's what you believe, what you trust in God, what you receive and you put into action. So is he a liar? Absolutely not. Is his word true? Absolutely. Can you get healed? Absolutely. Can you get healed by miracles? Yes. Can you get healed by doctors? Yes. Can you get healed by lifestyle change? Yes. Can you get healed by forgiveness? Especially. Once you start forgiving people, you get those bitter roots out, and God could say, whoo, I've been waiting for you to get that out of the way. Well, I wish I had more. God, why, don't I, why am I not rich and all this other stuff? And God's saying, you're rich. you got stuff other people don't have. If you're in the United States, you're richer than 95% of the people on the planet. Well, what about this, God? What about that? And it's like, well, you know, you're, you have to change your attitude. And then you have to change, you change your mind, you change your attitude. Then you have to stick to the promises of God's scriptures. How many people ever read that, that little book, Promises of God? I'm going to get a whole bunch of copies and just stick them in your hands. And you guys walk around because you can look up you know, something, healing or whatever. It's like when William got his healing, he realized, I got my healing, but now I have to learn to keep my healing. Amen? And that's like when I was talking about uh, lifestyle uh, on Psalms, lifestyle and money management. It's a lifestyle. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Now, I'll tell you why people, when they pray, they don't believe they receive. It's because they don't try. Now, when something breaks at our house, I always try to fix it, right? My wife thinks it's because I'm cheap. <laughs> yes, matter of fact, but I fix them. Right? And then she is like, cheapy, cheapy, cheapy. <laughs> and, but I do pray, and the uh, Lord shows me how to fix things. You know, the Lord showed me about this. I pop that in. That was not even, t you know, I, I'm to the point where I can pray. Boom, I'm getting there. Uh, the last couple days, I've been helping some people on some consulting stuff, and they've had four months of bottleneck log jam. Four months. I was there less than two days. I figured out the problem, contacted the right people, didn't know anything about their business, made the right moves, figured out their software, and got it fixed, and the IT person's going to have it all done by January 1st. Hallelujah. You think, oh, I'm going to step on their toes. Oh, i got to be careful. Oh, no, I didn't do any of that. I prayed. I, I had confidence it's going to happen. I'm not going to wait for these people. Well, you know, we can't do it. No, it's not going to be like that on my shift. Amen. <laughs> it's not going to be like that. We're going to have to get tough up here in here. We got to understand the power of God's inside you. When you start praying, he's going to tell you what to do. So let's read 14 through 17. So, however, you, however, learn the things and become convinced of them or of knowing from whom you have learned them from. Who are you learning from, actually? You're learning from the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, and from that, from that, you, from your childhood that you've known the sacred writings, you know the Bible, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads salvation through Christ through faith, which is Christ Jesus. So here we are, we got, we're making the right decision basing on Scripture, and then we know this about Scripture, verse 16. All Scripture is inspired by God. And look, I want you guys to think about this. When he wrote that, he was talking about the Old Testament. He wasn't talking about, ooh, the New Testament. 
No, this is the whole testament. And so all scriptures inspired by God, profitable for the teaching and the reproof and the correction and the training in righteousness. So you get yourself straightened out, you know how to pray, verse 17. So that the man of God be adequate, equipped for every good work. So as we're reading the Bible, something's going to happen. And so Sunday, the, uh, I was puffing up the Chinese people. I don't know if there's any Koreans in there. And I said, you know, the anthropologists say that the average white guy has an IQ of about 100 to 103. So Wyman, you're stuck in the middle someplace. And the average Asian, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, is 103 to about 106. Oh my God, really? Ooh. Then I find out that the Eskenazi Jews, Jewish people, the average IQ is about 115. Hmm. Well, why is that? Because it's not based on your gray matter up here. It's not based on your skin color or your brain or anything. It's based on the fact that they read the Bible and they learn how to make the right decision. Because the test they have is based on decision making. IQ is not, well, I have more information than you do. Oh, I got lots of garbage information. Oh, I got 30 years of TV that I can quiz and tell you all junk stuff about every TV show that's ever existed. That doesn't mean nothing. But if I can say I had the scripture back up and that the basic concepts and to make the correct decision that would benefit me here on earth and in the kingdom, that's what I want to make. So it has nothing to do with your outside. It has to do with where your heart's at. And if you're taking the scripture and you know that the scripture here is to equip you that the spirit of man and the Spirit of God comes together and that you get this direction going. And see, I believe this is the end time church and we're going to wipe out a lot of this, this garbage concept. And if you, you start talking to Pastor Kimberly, she's going to go, well, and the one new man, that's what it's about. We're going to bring everything back together in the one new man and that the Adam process, that Adam had the process by understanding the scripture and the purpose of God to name and do everything before he listened to his wife. Amen. And so so that the man of God will be adequate. Now, if you if you jump the, to Second uh, Timothy four, one through one through four, you're going to see something. I solemnly, you know, remember when they wrote the Bible, he didn't put in Second Timothy one, verse one. He didn't put that. So this is a continuous thought going on. He goes solemnly, solemnly. I charge you in the presence of God of Jesus Christ. So he's saying, look, I just gave you scripture to lead your life in the right direction. Then he says, I'm in charging you. I'm empowering you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is the judge of the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. So this is an ongoing process. He's a living God. He's building you up. He's getting you moving in the right direction. Verse two, then he says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. He's not talking about me preaching with my big mouth all the time. He's talking about you praying out loud, saying out loud, using the word of God in season, out of season to reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with great patience instruct other people. So we're all a part of this purpose of preaching. And then when you take that word preach out and you put the word prayer in when you start praying the word you're going to be ready in season out of season you'll be able to reprove yourself rebuke yourself exhort yourself raise yourself up have the patience be instructed so you can receive what you're praying for i made that up hallelujah i made that up in prayer today i think that was pretty good and so we, we preach and we pray, but as we're, our preaching should be prayers. And I got a call from uh, one of our people the other day, and they said, you know, Pastor Carl, you're the same inside and out. I'm going, well, thank you. She goes, well, a lot of pastors come up and they're like, hey, well, holy. And they do all this stuff. 
and there's nothing there. But we have to make this a lifestyle. It is adequate. That means that the minimum amount that we do will produce something. The minimum amount of perseverance and direction will produce something. The minimum amount of instruction will produce something if we believe it can and receive it. So as we pray and we preach, let's go to verse 3. I like this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Let me say, they is anybody at any time. And somebody says, well, you know, I, I think I changed my mind. I've been convinced by the world that same-sex marriage is good. I'm like, well, you're deceived. It's not going to happen. Well, you know, the majority of people believe this. Who cares? Cares. What is God telling you? Because what's going to happen when the time comes, they will not endure sound doctrine. It's a warning, like Pastor Kimberly said, hey, Jesus is coming. They're talking about building the temple. All hell is going to hit the fan, and then you're going to sit there and say, well, you know what, I'll take the mark of the beast over here. Well, maybe I'll concede this, or hey, let me take my child and sacrifice my children. Now, that's what happened in the Old Testament. Everybody started getting into idol worship, and that's what that is. And then, so they, they won't endure sound doctrine. They want to have their ears tickled. Ooh, that sounds like my little dog. Who oh, want my ears tickled. And then they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires. Well, I don't like Pastor Carl. He's saying this is bad. I like it. I want to go over and eat poison. It's good. Poison's good. Look, my friends eat poison. My friends smoke crack. My friends do this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm over here. And I'm saying, don't do it. You're going to hurt yourself. It's not good for you. Don't eat that poison. And so this is the problem in the church today. And so when you say, oh, look at this guy. He's a looney tune. Actually, I'm pretty much on the money. I'm just funny at it. Verse 4 and they will turn their ears from the truth and they'll and they will turn aside to myths. Well, you know, global warming, everything points the opposite. Just one vote. Well, you know, the carbon footprint. Well, that whole thing is just to take money and wash it around. The carbon footprint. You know, one volcano, one volcano, one volcano exploding excludes more CO2 and microparticulates into the atmosphere than all of the pollution of all mankind combined. Did anybody know that? Because I've said it before, right? <laughs> so there are lies out there. Well, you know, we're going to have to start walking. Then they say, well, let's have an electric car, and they burn coal to make the electric car. Then they, then they get the electric batteries. Now, we need lithium batteries. Well, they use slaves out of Africa. They got little kids eating out of mud puddles trying to get the lithium. They turning in for pennies so you can drive a $150,000 electric car that burns coal to produce electricity so you run the car. I think that's a myth. Is that a myth? Am I on a tangent? Yes. The problem is when we're praying, we have to learn to receive the truth. So if I start praying from the get-go, and I know my end game needs to line up with God's word, and the end game is going to be God's truth, I need to keep my focus that way. I can't change my understanding of the word of God to appease my situation. I need to change how my heart, my spirit, my mind receives the word of God and prepare myself to receive the truth of God in the end game, no matter what happens around me, to benefit the kingdom and God. That's powerful. I'm going to have to go back and watch this. I know you guys are all thrilled about it. So our prayers have to become effectual. Our prayers have to be received. 
We have to pray believing. We have to line our prayers up. So when we literally pray that prayer, we throw that big old prayer football, and then we're running, we're running, and we're running down the field, and we keep running. We don't look at what's going on. We keep running, and then we get to the other end of the field. We catch it, and we win. Amen. People don't think that way unless you're trained in the Word of God. Until you get that down in your spirit, man, you will not finish college, right? You will not finish Bible school. You will not finish the game. You will not have the house because if you, you can't get that vision in your mind, your spirit. It won't happen. So William has decided to keep his healing, live a long time, be healthy, right? Amen. When you decide it's going to happen, then you line yourself up for that long bomb. You throw that pass and you just keep running. You don't worry about the devil. You don't worry about people's doing stupid stuff. You jump over that, go around it. Don't listen to them. Don't tickle your ears. And you get at the end of the game, you catch your own prayer. You receive your own prayer. You take your prayer and slam it in the ground. Say, touchdown. I got what I wanted. I was patient. God did everything that he said he was going to do. And I've received the benefit of the kingdom. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are taking us to that next level. You're teaching us how to pray, that you have wiped out the devil at the cross, and that those who have fallen down, that that wish the tickled ears and the wishy doctrine and that fear, those things, Father, we just wipe it out. We ask, Father, that you uh, keep you sure how strong, that you line us up with your word. We keep the fear out, that you have a great plan for us, that you're going to expand us. You're bringing many people in here. Father, we just praise you that you're increasing the audience on the Internet. We just thank you, Father, for the worship, all that you're doing, Father, that there's an increase in this season, and the prophetic word for victory is here. Father, we bless you. We thank you for uh, protection over Israel and Jerusalem. We pray for that. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hashem, amen.